Welcome everyone to LuchaWorld.com's countdown to the 10 greatest tag teams in Lucha Libre history. Fredo Esparza here, and this list was compiled by myself. And if you have any uh, thoughts, opinions, if you agree, disagree, or you want to know about any other particular tag team that wasn't on the list, uh, feel, feel free to post a comment, or you can tweet me at the Real Fredo or at Lucha World on Twitter. Here we go with the countdown. Uh, before I mention, before I I start with the with the ten teams that make the list, I should mention some of the honorable mention tag teams, teams that did not make the list. Uh, one of the teams I didn't actually li- po- put on the LuchaWorld.com post. Um, you could find the list on LuchaWorld.com, but one of the teams I didn't post in my honorable mentions that probably should have been mentioned was um, the Exotico tag team of El Bello Greco and Sergio Del Mozo. Um, totally forgot about them. As far as an honorable mention, they were a fantastic tag team that traveled, not only worked in Mexico, but traveled in, to the United States and Japan. And they're, they had a really fun comedy act. There were other tag teams that you could list. The list could go on and on. Uh, many of them would include El Santo as, 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 as part of a, another tag team. But here's the honorable mention list that I included. It includes El Santo and Rayo de Jalisco, Los Gemelos Diablo, 1 and 2, who were outstanding tag team in the 70s um, working in Mexico and in the United States in the southwest portion of the U.S., primarily in California. And I think they also wrestled a bit in Texas. Mil Mascaras and Dos Caras, who were... I, they were probably the team that I kind of felt the hardest when it came to listing them on here as the top 10. They were probably one of the last teams I took out. Um, they were a, a very popular tag team in Mexico and in Japan and in the United States, but I kind of felt like when they weren't, they really weren't as regular of a tag team in Mexico like they were when they were booked outside of, you know, in Japan or in the United States. Ringo Mendoza and Cachorro Mendoza, the brother tag team, another excellent tag team from the 70s. They also wrestled quite a bit in the in the 80s. I think they pretty much continued on into the 90s, but they were more of a regular tag team in, during the 70s, early 80s. Los Compadres del Diablo, Paraguayo, and Fishman. Great tag team, also a great rivalry uh, between these two. Um, they were actually um, legit compadres in real life, and um, they were a, a very good tag team for the Promociones Mora UWA group. Los Headhunters, one and two. Many of you know them, are more familiar with them from their time in IWA Japan, and they're making their appearance, that one appear, uh, rare appearance on on WWE Raw back in I'm thinking that was like in 96 97 or so very rare appearance for them but they were a very good tag team in, in CMLL um, and they also wrestled in the independence for UWA um, in the in the later run of 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 the of that promotion El Hijo del Santo and Octagon another tag team great tag team in AAA um, very popular Ruben Juarez and Humberto Garza a Monterey tag team that was very popular in the 60s. Batman and Robin. Yes, they belong in this list. For those of you not familiar, there was a Lucha Libre tag team of Batman and Robin, and they were actually a um, big-time tag team on the independent scene. They worked a few... I think, I'm think i pretty sure they might have wrestled on a few EMLL shows. And I know they wrestled in UWA, but they were a very popular independent tag team that um, went on for a few years. Later on, there was different versions of that tag team. Um, but I'm talking about the original group of Batman, tag team of Batman and Robin. Medico Asesino and El Enfermero, uh, one of the big tag teams from about the 50s uh, for Televicentro. These guys were, were, were really kind of like the precursor to La Ola Blanca or the Dr. Gimmick, in, in, you know, with the medics, Dr. Wagner and Angel Blanco, later on Dr. Wagner Jr., Dr. Cerebro, and on and on. These guys were kind of like the, the first duo that existed as far as the doctor or medical type of gimmick. Los Traumas, one of the more recent tag teams, Negro Navarro's sons, They've been one of the top tag teams on the independent scene. They've wrestled a few times in AAA, but um, it's really been the independents where they've really shined. And Scorpio Jr. and Bestia Salvaje, who are a really popular Rudo tag team in the late 90s, early like 2000s. They later became a trio with Shocker, and later they also added Emilio Charles Jr. So they were another tag team that I definitely feel felt belonged 
on this list came close um, but there's only this is a top 10 and we are going to start with the number 10 the lucha brothers phoenix and pentagon jr um, they didn't start teaming it up regularly until they started wrestling on u.s independent shows back in 2016 some of their early success was as opponents in Mexico. They would team up more frequently by early 2017 when they left AAA for the independence in Mexico. Uh, really where they first started teaming up regularly was for the crash promotion in, in Tijuana. Um, they've won several tag team titles in Impact, PWG, MLW, The Crash, and AAA. They've had an ongoing rivalry with the Young Bucks that has gone on in the U.S. and in Mexico. They are the team that probably best represents the current high-impact, high-flying style of wrestling. The one thing that I could see keep them from being an even more successful tag team might be that they have each have um, tremendous potential as single stars. Uh, we've really seen Phoenix kind of shine as a singles wrestler in AAA, and he's also had some amazing um, singles matches in the United States and, of course, in Mexico. Um, against Kenny Omega, he's had a lot of um, a couple of matches that have been um, very well received and very good. Penta. I think he ha has, of all the luchadors, I think he probably has the potential to be like this um, super heel or super babyface type of wrestler just because of his um, his per his persona. And we saw that a bit in Lucha Underground. Um, so they are the top, the number 10 tag team that I have listed. Coming in at number 9, I have El Hijo del Santo and Nero Casas. This tag team kind of came about because we had seen another tag team prior to this featuring El Hijo del Santo. Uh, with promoters in Mexico wanting to recreate the El Santo Gory Guerrero Pareja, Pareja Atomica tag team with the two sons, El Hijo de Santo, teaming up with Eddie Guerrero. And um, it never really seemed to catch on. They they kind of did do a little bit of, um, they did have some success, but it was mostly on the independent level. And by that point in time, they kind of were already being um, sent elsewhere. El Hijo de Santo was already like a big star and Eddie Guerrero was somebody just trying to like build up his name. He was a really talented wrestler at that point in time, but uh, for the most part, he still wasn't quite at the level of Hijo de Santo at that point in time. And they actually ended up um, feuding for a bit. Where Hijo de Santo really found a lot of success was when he ended up finding a, a, a partner that had been a longtime rival of his, and that would be Nero Casas. These two had a rivalry that goes back to the mid-1980s. Um, they started teaming up really in August 1998, so you're talking about a rivalry that went from 1985-86 all the way through um, 1998. So probably a 12-year rivalry. And of course, they would go on. And actually, after that point, it kind of they kind of became um, tied together as a tag team for the remainder of their um, careers. Back in August 1988, Nero Casas was attacked by Forza Guerrera and the Vianos which turned Nero Casas Tecnico in CMLL. El Hijo de Santo was teaming with the Rudos at that time with Fuerza Guerrera, and he had problems with Fuerza Guerrera, and that led to the split, and Sadito decided to, to become a Tecnico. With Casas and Hijo Santo on the same side, they formed a very successful tag team. They held the CML World Tag Team titles on three occasions and had a memorable feud with the Rudo team of Bestia Salvaje and Scorpio Jr. They beat that team in a mask and hair versus mask and hair match on March 19th, 1999. The Santo Casas team would continue through through 2006 and would also feud with the other te tag teams that include the Girls del Infierno, which of course consisted of Ray Bucanero and Ultimo Guerrero. Coming in at number eight, I have Los Cowboys, Silver King and El Tejano. After several years of being a successful trio, El Tejano split from Los Misioneros de la Muerte and left Promociones Mora to go to EMLL. There, he started teaming with El Dandy, uh, and actually he started also teaming up with Sil Silver King as the trio of Los Cowboys, but he would find far more success teaming with Silver King as the tag team that became known as Los Co Cowboys throughout the world. The team would have a lot of success in CMLL, UWA, WWA, and IWA in Japan and Puerto Rico. They even made an appearance in WCW as the Silver Kings as part of the NWA World Tag Team title tournament at the WCW Clash of Champions 19 on June 16th, 1992. I think they were supposed to beat the Freebirds and then the typical WCW, they just switched over to you know having the more known tag team win. Um, but I think that would have been cool if the, if the, if the, if the cow those Cowboys would have won. Um, who knows where that would have taken them. But at the same time, 1992 WCW was bringing in a lot of international talent. And they, they would kind of use them once and then kind of just not want to bring them back again. 
or bring them in for a few spot shows, and that was basically it. Los Cowboys had great rival- rivalries with the Headhunters and the Can-Am Express of Do- Doug Furness and Dan Crawford. They beat the Can-Am Express in a double hair versus mask match on July 12, 1992. They held the CML World, UWA World, WWA World, and IWA World Tag Team titles. Coming in at number 7, I have La Pareja del Terror, also na- known as part of those Gringos Locos, Eddie Guerrero, and Love Machine Art Bar. Um, despite only having about a two-year run as a tag team, no one can deny the impact that Eddie Guerrero and Love Machine Art Bar had as a team in, L- in Lucha Libre history. They brought several elements from how heels acted in the U.S. and combined them with their in-ring ability to put together one of the most charismatic teams in Mexico. Eddie Guerrero also found his true calling as a Rudo in this tag team. And you, even when he turned technical later in his career, you could still get a lot of elements of, the, of him having a lot of um, the heel persona in those even being as a technical he still had a little bit of that element to him um the two would later join with conan and other rudos to form los gringos locos faction but that team was the heart and soul of it all they held the triple a iwc world tag team titles while feuding with el hijo de santo and octagon those two teams would have a classic mask versus hair match at the november 6 1994 when worlds collide pay-per-view Unfortunately, Art Bar would pass away on November 23rd, 1994, putting an end to one of the great tag teams of that era. Um, it also pretty much put an end to the Los Gringos Locos faction because within a few months, um, AAA decided to break them off and turn Conan babyface. And that was the plan. They were going to have Conan feud with the, the Gringos Locos afterwards. And um, that was what they ended up doing. But unfortunately, there was no Art Bar to be part of that. Coming in at number six, I have Los Hermanos Espanto, Espanto 1 and Espanto 2, Jose Eusebio Vasquez Bernal, Espanto 1, and Fernando Cisneros Carrillo, Espanto 2, were good friends since their childhood days living in Torreón. They would both become pro wrestlers, and when, within a short period of time in the business, they would end up teaming up as Los Hermanos Espanto. After debuting in EMLL on January 24, 1961 as a tag team, they had an undefeated streak of 34 wins on Tuesday shows. That quickly bumped them to the Friday Arena Mexico shows and made them a top tag team in Mexico. They held the national tag team titles in the 60s and in late 1962, the duo would become one of the top Rudo trios in Lucha Libre when Jose's brother, Miguel Vasquez Bernal, would don the mask and become Espanto Tercero. All three Espantos would lose their masks during a one-year period in big matches against Ruben Juarez, that would be Espanto 2 on September 6, 1963. Espanto 1 would follow that up, losing his mask to El Santo on October 25, 1963. And Espanto III would lose his mask to Huracan Ramirez on June 12, 1964. Still, the tag team were together for nearly eight years until the untimely death of Espanto 1 in 1968. Coming in at number 5, I have Los Guerreros del Infierno, Ultimo Guerrero, and Rey Bucanero, the best tag team in Mexico in the 2000s. Much like many other tag teams, Rey Bucanero and Ultimo Guerrero started teaming when El Satanico decided to form a new version of the legendary trio of Los Infernales. Guerrero and Bucanero would team with El Satanico in 1999, and they had instant chemistry. Ultimo Guerrero and Rey Bucanero won the CML World Tag Team titles in a term- tournament held on August 4, 2000. They would go on to hold those tag team titles on three occasions. While they were building their reputation as the best tag team in Mexico at that time, El Satanico was feuding with Tarzan Boy. Ultimo Guerrero and Rey Bucanero would take that next step to stardom when they turned on El Satanico and aligned themselves with Tarzan Boy to form Los Guerreros del Infierno. GDI became the top trio in CMLL. Meanwhile, Ultimo Guerrero and Rey Bucanero feuded with several top tag teams over the years, including El Hijo de Santo Nero Casas, Dr. Wagner Jr. and L.A. Park, El Satanico and Averno, and Shocker and L.A. Park. For a six-year period, they dominated CML's tag team division and even made appearances in New Japan, All Japan, Toriumon, and TNA. At number four, I have La Ola Blanca, Dr. Wagner and Angel Blanco. Dr. Wag- Wagner and Angel Blanco joined forces in early 19- 1966, to form the Rudo tag team that would gain fame as La Ola Blanca. They were quickly considered one of the top two Rudo tag teams in Mexico and were quickly given a big rivalry with 
then Arena Mexico Tag Team Champions El Santo and Rayo de Jalisco. Boxy Lucha picked them as the Tag Team of the Year in 1966. They held the National Tag Team and the NWA America's Tag Team titles over the years. Their team had tremendous success and would soon add El Solitario to form one of Mexico's most legendary trios. Dr. Wagner and Angel Blanco would remain a tag team for several years, and when they split with El Solitario, that breakup led to some big matches between former trio's partners, with the Dr. Wagner and Angel Blanco team continuing as Rudos. Tragedy would end this memorable tag team as on April 26, 1986, when both were in a car crash that saw Angel Blanco lose his life and Dr. Wagner was hurt badly and left wheelchair bound for the remainder of his life. Also in that um, car accident were Solar, Mano Negra, and Jungla Negra, who didn't suffer um, any serious injuries, but did um, suffer for many years a lot of uh, mental issues. Um, they talk about how they, they go back and they... they um, Solar actually talked about how he, he couldn't sleep for, for several months because of um, he constantly remembered being in the accident and losing one of his friends in that accident and also um, one of his mentors who also remained wheelchair-bound. Oddly enough, also a month prior to that was um, the passing of um, of El Solitario, the third member of um, the Ola Blanca. At number three, Los Hermanos Shadow, Black Shadow and Blue Demon. They were initially billed as real life brothers, but that would change in later years and there was more talk about them being good friends. They had a bitter rivalry with La Pareja Atomica, El Sato and Gory Guerrero. That went on for several years. They won the Mexican national tag team titles in 1957. Much like other teams from the 1950s and 1960s, Blue Demon and Black Shadow had incredible success as single stars. Blue Demon is considered one of the most popular luchadors of all time, while Black Shadow is considered the father of high-flying lucha libre and given credit for evolving wrestling in Mexico. The other thing about um, Los Hermanos Shadow, um, there was actually when they did the Blue Demon TV series um, set a couple of years ago, they actually had um, they actually told the story of, the, of them too as only instead of saying Black Shadow they uh, referred to Black Shadow as Black Wind, uh, but that's something else you could also um, if you want to know more about like the uh, if, if you want to see how the impact of this tag team was there's still stories told about them and they actually had ama- amazing rivalries with a lot of the the top Rudos from the 50s uh, they were they were you know they they, they were a really good tag team uh, coming in at number two. La Pareja Atomica, El Santo and Gory Guerrero. El Santo and Gory Guerrero started teaming in late 1945. They had success very quickly, beating every team that they faced, including teams that featured Bobby Bonales, Jack O'Brien, and Tarzan Lopez. The team was near unstoppable early in EMLL, with El Santo being a rudo brawler and Gory Guerrero being a great technical wrestler. Gory Guerrero was having a bloody feud with Carvinario Galindo, so EMLL decided to bring that singles feud and combine it into a tag team feud that would headline several EMLL shows. Gory would team with El Santo in this wild feud against Carvernario Galindo and Black Shadow. They also had a heated rivalry with Los Hermanos Shadow, which eventually led to what is considered the most important match in Lucha Libre history as El Santo beat Black Shadow in a mask match on November 7, 1952. El Santo and Gory would team on and off in later years as they were close friends. Um, El Santo's legendary finisher, La de Acaballo, the camel clutch, was actually a creation made popularized by El Santo, but was invented by Gory Guerrero. When Gory started promoting shows in Ciudad Juarez and El Paso, when he needed to draw a big crowd, he would simply call his friend El Santo. And the number one tag team, and I think a lot of people are a little bit surprised that I didn't put La Pareja Tomica as number one, but I felt this was the number one tag team overall. In my opinion, Los Rebeldes, René Guajardo and Karloff Lagarde. René Guajardo and Karloff Lagarde not only were a successful tag team, but they were also considered among the best singles wrestlers during their primes. They each dominated their weight divisions. Guajardo dominated the middleweight division while Lagarde ruled the welterweight division for several years. Lagarde was considered by Boxy Lucha the luchador of the year three times in 1958, 1959, and 1964 while Guajardo was considered luchador, luchador of the year four times in 1961, 1962, 1965, and 1966. Guajardo and Lagarde were also part of a su- successful trio with Ray Mendoza. They also had feuds with some of the best of that era, including El Santo, Rayo de Jalisco, Blue Demon, Doral Dixon, 
Black Shadow, Mil Masteras, and also Ray M Mendoza, and countless others that were famous during that time period, um, including Ruben Juarez and Humberto Garza. Um, the team would have breakups to feud over the years, but they usually found their way back to teaming up. The Guajardo, Lagarde, Mendoza trio had enough power that when they left EMLL, they were instrumental along with several promoters in forming Promociones Mora in 1975 and creating EMLL's biggest competition since Televicentro in the 1950s. Guajardo would become the promoter of La División del Norte, which were shows promoted in northern Mexico. Lagarde would continue to wrestle sporadically into the early 1980s. That's my list for the 10 greatest tag teams in Lucha Libre history. Um, I think the big... Um, the big debate is whether Pareja Atomica should be considered number one. Well, honestly, if you look at the, the, the final three teams on this list, you could really go 1A, 1B, and 1C and can't go wrong uh, because all three of those teams were very memorable. Well, I hope everyone enjoyed this and remember to subscribe to the Retro Wrestling YouTube channel. Um, check us out over our, our two websites, LuchaWorld.com and RetroWrestling.com. And for more bonus content, sign up to our Patreon at patreon.com slash Lucha World. We have a lot of stuff available on there, Lucha Magazine write-ups, um, podcasts, other rewards that you can get on there exclusively on our Patreon. Again, thanks everyone for listening.